This is the latest on space weather having to do with our sun's activity. Solar storm is incoming and northern lights are to be visible on Wednesday in two days. This is by Sean Martin of Express UK. A solar storm heading towards our Earth. Experts have warned the resulting cosmic rays will barrage our planet in the coming days. The hole, known as a coronal hole, has opened on the southern part of the sun's atmosphere. It's releasing cosmic particles into the cosmos. Sunspots are patches of darkness on the sun, which are caused by underlying magnetism beneath the sun's surface. But sometimes that magnetism bubbles up and is released in the form of solar flares, the starbursts or the coronal mass ejections, and they spew cosmic particles into space. And what's dangerous is those flares that come towards Earth. Holes like this are common, but researchers have warned the stream of solar particles could come smashing into its atmosphere. And when they do, likely to be, people are in the upper reaches of the northern hemisphere will be treated to northern lights. Cosmic forecasting website Space Weather said southern hole in the sun's atmosphere is facing Earth and spewing a stream of solar wind to our direction and uh, the minor geomagnetic storms and arctic auroras are possible when this gaseous material arrives. Auroras which include the northern lights, aurora borealis and the southern lights aurora australis are caused when solar particles hit our atmosphere. As the magnetosphere gets bombarded with solar winds, stunning blue lights can appear as uh, that layer of the atmosphere deflects the particle. It's not just blue, it's basically a rainbow uh, array of colors. For the most part, the Earth's magnetic field protects humans from the barrage of radiation, but solar storms can affect satellite-based technology as well. Solar winds can heat the Earth's outer atmosphere, causing it to expand, and this effort affects satellites in orbit, potentially leading to lack of GPS navigation, mobile phone signals, and satellite TVs. Also, a surge of particles can lead to high currents in the magnetosphere, which can lead to higher than normal electricities in uh, electricity power lines, resulting in electrical transformers and power stations blowing out if this happens, and therefore a loss of power. The higher amounts of radiation also leave people vulnerable to cancer. And uh, also, with these flares, we also sometimes feel we have headaches or migraines because of this. Now, according to Space Weather, experts predict a long, deep solar minimum. An international panel of researchers led by NASA and NOAA has released a new prediction for the solar cycle. The current solar minimum is going to deepen, potentially reaching a century class low in the next year or so. This will be followed by a new solar max in the years 2023 to 2026. Big sunspots are producing ocean surf sounds. If you have a shortwave radio, you might have heard some unusual sounds this week. Big sunspot AR2738 is producing strong bursts of radio static, and they sound like ocean surf, says Thomas Ashcraft who recorded this specimen April 13th using an amateur radio telescope in New Mexico. And that's what it sounds like, as you can see. So this is the sunspot here, 2738. These radio sounds are caused by the beams of electrons, in this case accelerated by B-class explosions in the sunspot's magnetic canopy, and as the electrons slice through the sun's atmosphere, they generate a ripple of plasma waves and radio emissions detected on Earth 30, uh, 93 million miles away. That's how far we are from the sun. That's one AU, it's 93 million miles away. Astronomers classify solar radio bursts into five types. Ashcroft's recording captured a type 3. 
There have been a lot of these sounds over the past week, and they appear to be intensifying now that the sunspot is directly facing our Earth, says Ashcroft. And you can also, if you'd like to detect solar radio bursts in your own backyard, you can order a radio telescope kit from NASA's Radio Joe Project. Project. Isn't that something? And this is our uh, sunspot sunrise. Sunspot A are 2738, which is this one here. Uh, we can see it right here with our own naked eye. And there it is. It is three times wider than Earth. It's three times as wide as Earth and covers more than a billion square kilometers of the sun's surface. It's so big, people are seeing it in the sunrise. There it is. I had a pleasant surprise this morning, reports Trevor Perry of Garucha, Spain, the giant sunspot was visible as the sun came up over the sea. There it is. A close look at Perry's photo reveals more than the sunspot. The sun itself is sliced into multiple layers. There we are, very clearly seen as lines. That's a wider line. The more pink as it goes up, and then white. So um, the sun itself sliced into multiple layers. By temperature inversions over the sea surface, giving a solar di the solar disk a jagged edge. Jagged edges everywhere, as you can see. A zoomed-in image of the sunspot would have undoubtedly revealed similar distortions in its dark outline. AR-2738 is an unusually large sunspot, especially considering the low state of the solar cycle. Photographers around the world are busy taking its picture with beautiful results. And you can see the real-time photo gallery here. Let's go there. Sunspots. Long Ahman from Malaysia has it there. That's the moon. There's a sunspot from Lynchburg, Virginia. There's the aurora, the northern lights. And, uh, ooh, that's nice, 2738 sunspot in white light, that is huge. Again, here, here, here. That's the one that we saw before. And that's the size of the Earth compared to the sunspot. Amazing. There are a lot of amateur astronomer clubs people join. It means that they have to get themselves a very good-sized, strong telescope to be able to look at these celestial bodies and even snap pictures of them. And there are competitions where you can go and show your pictures and you do get awards for the best pictures. And also, a lot of these astronomers have even discovered incoming asteroids and comets. So, warning, even when the sun is dimmed by low-hanging clouds or haze, it can still damage your eyes. Sunlight magnified by unfiltered object, optics is dangerously bright. If you choose to photograph the low sun, as Perry did, use the camera's LCD screen for safe viewing. Never look into the eyepiece of an unfiltered camera or telescope when the sun is in the field of view. And this is what it looks like here, the coronal hole. Coronal hole would could uh, graze Earth's magnetic field on April 19th to 20th, causing polar geomagnetic unrest. So that's in uh, four to five days. And the, this is our northern lights here, as you can see, over North America, over Hudson Bay, basically. These are the fireballs. Today, a network reported uh, the network reported eight fireballs coming in. The diagram on the inner solar system, all of the fireballs orbit, orbits intersect at a single point, and that is Earth. I wonder why. They always seem to intersect at Earth instead of anywhere else. And we had 1,967 potentially hazardous asteroids as of April 16. And uh, this one here, GT19, already passed, already passed. The pink ones are the most sad. This is one 
April 18th, 06 LD. Uh, so that's pretty, you know, ma ma the missed distances. And the diameter is 17 meters. Velocity 5.6 kilometers per second. Also, we have the daily hot flights. As you can see, the more hours you spend in a flight, the more radiation you get, obviously. This is 3 hours 17 minutes from Van Nuys to Chicago. Or 2, th two hours 24 minutes from West Palm Beach to White Plains, New York. Um, and the less you fly, and depending on where the uh, corridors or flights are, there could be less radiation. And we see also, because of the fact that our magnetosphere is lessening, is decreasing, we have more solar radiation coming into us and to our plants and to our atmosphere and to our water and into all bodies, living bodies. and. Uh, it's, we see that it has decreased about 20% since December 27, 2014 to April 10th. Okay, that's the 18th, but this should be the 19th extrapolated. Must be over 20% now. The data points in the graph above correspond to the peak of the Renegar Fotzer maximum, which lies about 67,000 feet above central California. When cosmic rays crash into Earth's atmos atmosphere, they produce a spray of secondary particles that is most intense in the entrance to the stratosphere. Physicists Eric Reniger and George Fotzer discovered the maximum using balloons in the 1930s, and it is what we're measuring today. In this plot, dose rates are expressed in mil multiples of sea levels, for instance, we see that boarding a plane that flies at 25,000 feet exposes passengers to a dose rate about 10 times higher than sea level, and whereas if it's flying at 40,000 feet, we get a multiplier close to 50 times more radiation than we have at sea level. Now, why are cosmic rays intensifying? The main reason is the sun. Solar storm clouds, such as coronal mass ejections, CMEs, sweep aside cosmic rays when they pass by Earth, and during solar maximum, CMEs are abundant and cosmic rays are held at bay. Now, however, the solar cycle is swinging towards solar minimum, allowing the cosmic rays to return. Another reason could be the weakening of Earth's magnetic field, which seems to be the case, uh, why all this is happening, which keeps, helps keep protect us from deep space radiation. I'll leave this below for you for this on uh, space weather as well. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.